Hi, everybody. So happy to see you virtually again. Um, it was kind of sad not to post a video for you yesterday, um, but here I am. And hopefully you guys had a wonderful spring break and you are easing back into e-learning. Like you, I mean, you guys did a fantastic job before we left for spring break, so hopefully you can get yourself back in the same routine. Um, today's lesson, we are going into 7-6, which is exponential functions. Super, super, super important. And I will tell you too, um, as we move forward, your lessons are going to be more high school-like, okay? As we move forward in our algebra book, your lessons are going to be more complex, more content-heavy. That being said, if you have questions, you need help, please message me. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out or if you're like, hey, I think we need another day for this lesson, like maybe just like a practice day, let me know because I'm here to help you. Problem solving number five is due Thursday at 11.59. This is one where like some people might get it in like two minutes. Some people it might take like 10, 15. For me, it would have taken a little bit longer, um, but hopefully it's a little, it's a good change of pace from like the IAR writing response. Also, please enjoy this picture of Ruffles. That is Ben and Shelly's dog and she misses you guys. So cute. Okay, um, your goals for today, number one, you want to be able to differentiate between linear and exponential functions. That probably sounds pretty abstract to you right now, but I think once I show you, it'll help you out a little bit. And then also you're gonna to try to graph exponential functions. Pretty hard to do virtually without graph paper in front of you, but we're gonna make it work, I promise. As I told you, very, very important. I'm really thinking towards like your honors geometry class, very important concept for you to learn and master and even thinking towards like algebra two and trig okay so pay close attention get your notebook so you can take notes alongside with me um and feel free to pause rewind the video if you need help or you need to like rehear something all right let's go into a quick introduction so take a second pause the video and read kind of the introduction So if you don't know who Leonardo DiCaprio is, number one, oh my goodness, um, this is what he looks like. So hopefully <laughs> this rings a bell for you. Um, in 2016, he won his first Oscar, um, which was like a big deal because he was in all these like amazing movies and he could never win this Oscar. So once he finally won for the movie The Revenant, people were like going crazy on the internet. I don't know if you guys had social media in 2016. Um, I was a four years ago, so you guys would have been little, but let's talk about Twitter a little bit. So suppose someone with a lot of time on his hands created a meme and tweeted it, and yes, there were a lot of memes that went out for Leonardo. After one minute, he got five retweets. After one more minute, each of those retweets got another five, and it's so on and so forth. So if you're looking at a data table, at zero minutes, there's one tweet. Okay, it was the original guy who tweeted out the meme. After one minute, it got five retweets, so that's like five more going to the Twitter universe. After two minutes, each of those five got five more, so you're continuing to multiply by five. This is the idea behind exponential data. It's like it starts small and it continues to multiply into something very big. And hopefully you can see, even as your X values are only going up by one, your Y values are being multiplied by a common factor, and that common factor in this case is five. So if we fill this in, it would look like this. Look, after five minutes, 3,125 tweets that went out. And your graph would look something like this. It's got that curve showing how it starts small and it increases at an exponential rate. Now, if we were using an equation to model this data, here's what it would look like. Y equals five to the X power. Now, remember before we left school, we like did a few of these together where I'd give you like a data table and you guys had to come up with the equation with an exponent and it was kind of hard, um, but that was really looking at exponential data where X represents the number of minutes, Y is the number of tweets. So when we're thinking exponential, you are thinking of data that's increasing or decreasing by a very large amount very quickly and a line that's gonna be curved rather than a straight line. So if you have your notebooks, here's your title for today, Exponential Functions. Today, we're kind of laying the groundwork um, for tomorrow's lesson on growth and decay. So here we go. When we're thinking about just graphs, a linear function obviously creates a straight line. 
It has a slope, it has a constant rate of change, linear makes a little line. The equation that would be modeled with a linear function is in slope intercept form. Y equals mx plus b, okay, m being your slope. Exponential graphs have a curve to them, okay, because they're either increasing or they're decreasing by a very crazy amount. And your equations you'll see an exponent. Notice exponential. Do you kind of see the word exponent in there? Okay, right here. And then here's your exponent. So those are two ways to kind of see like, all right, if your equation's in slope-intercept form, obviously that's gonna create a straight line that has to be a linear function. If your equation has an exponent, you know that that's gonna create a curved line, it's gonna be an exponential function. We can also look at data tables to help us out too. So this is just your introduction. You don't need to write anything down here. I have it laid out for you on a slide. When you're looking at a linear table, notice all of your x's are going up by one. Your y's are being added, um, four is being added every time. So common difference of one, common difference of four. You're adding the same amount. With exponential tables, however, notice even though your x's are still going up by one, your y's are being multiplied by a common ratio. These are being multiplied by three. So as soon as you see y's being multiplied, you know that that's gonna be exponential. Okay, so let's go back to what we know. For a linear function, it is linear if your x's have a common difference and your y's have a common difference. That just means that you're adding or subtracting the same number. So notice your x's are going up by one, 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 all the way down. Your y's, we are adding four, add four, add four, add four. Because we're adding four to every single one, that's gonna be linear. Okay, if you plotted this on a coordinate plane, it'd create a straight line. When we talk about exponential, here's the new part for you. These are functions that are in this form here. And sorry, I forgot the little multiplication sign. So your exponential functions will be in the form of y equals a times b to the x. Tomorrow, we're gonna to talk about what this a represents and kind of what the b and the x represent. But for right now, if you can just recognize that exponential functions are in the form of y equals a times b to the x, then you're good to go. And remember that your graphs are gonna look something like this, where you've got the curve, the curve, curve, and the curve. If we're looking at tables, remember that your x values still have a common difference. They're still going up or down by the same amount. Your y values have a common ratio. Okay, common ratio, that is so important. So if you're looking at your x's, ask your, or sorry, your y's, are they being added by the same amount or are they being multiplied? And I can tell that each of these, I know I'm multiplying by three, multiply by three, multiply by three because I'm multiplying, that's gotta be exponential. So let's practice differentiating between the two. And it might be a good idea as I present you with two to kind of pause it and ask yourself. So if I gave you these two equations, okay, I know that this one is gonna be linear because it's in slope-intercept form. Um, and if I graphed it, it'd be a straight line. I also don't see an exponent, which is my clue that it's gonna be linear. This guy, as soon as you see this exponent, you know that it's gonna be exponential. It's also in the exponential format where it's y equals a times b to the x. So linear, exponential. When we're looking at data tables, let me grab my pen really quick. Um, if you're looking, I see that these are all being added by one. And down here, I know, oops, sorry, that these are all adding two. So I add two, add two, add two. Because they both have a common difference, I know that this is gonna be linear, okay? Because we're just adding, we're not multiplying. Down here for this table, and I'm sure that you can guess which one this is gonna be, I see that x's are all adding one, but from seven to 14, okay, yes, I could add seven, but then if I add seven again, that would get me to 21, not 28. These are all being multiplied by two. Because your y values are being multiplied, you know that this is gonna be exponential. So now that we know the difference between linear and exponential functions, we can now evaluate and we can graph exponential functions. So let's take a look together. 
So I'm going to give you a second um, for you to be able to read this problem really quick. Um, and please understand that this would literally be my nightmare if this happens. So go ahead and pause the video and read the problem. So what we're talking about here, we're starting with 30 beetles left undisturbed in a warehouse bin, which I, I cannot even imagine that. Every week, the population doubles. So it starts at 30 to 60 to 120. I, I cannot even handle that. The equation here, f of x equals 30 times 2 to the x power, represents the data set that we're looking at. Notice 30 is like your starting population, and it's doubling every week, which is where the 2 comes from. x represents how many weeks go by. They want to know how many beetles will be there after 56 days. So right away, hopefully you see, well, I know that x is being represented by weeks, but we're only given days. Let's convert days to weeks. So take your 56, and to convert to weeks, let's just divide by 7, which gives us 8 weeks. So now to evaluate to see how many beetles we have, we can plug in 8 for x here. So here's your original equation. Okay. And then let's plug in 8 as our exponent because 8 weeks go by and we want to see how many beetles will be there after. Then you just have to grab your calculator and say, all right, I know to the 8th power is 256, multiply by 30, which means that there would be 7,680 beetles. All right. That's not even something I want to think about. So when you are evaluating exponential functions, oftentimes you just need to plug in your number here for x, and then you just need to evaluate. So you just need a calculator. All right, now to graph an exponential function, you guys actually have a decent foundation on this. We've done this a little bit together. If I asked you to graph y equals 3 times 2 to the x power, it's not like it's in slope-intercept form where you can just plot your y-intercept and your slope and connect. You've got to create an xy chart so that you can get yourself some coordinate pairs. So here's an xy chart that I just came up with, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. You're going to plug that into your equation so that you can get a y-value and plot that coordinate pair. So if I plug in negative 1 for x, remember that 2 to the negative 1 power Okay, is really 1 over 2 to the first because we've got the negative exponent. You've got to change it to your denominator. So right here, we're really saying 3 times 1 half, and I know that that's 1.5. So now I do have my first coordinate pair that I can go through and graph. So I'm going to go to negative 1, and then I'm going to go up to 1.5. If I was plugging in 0 for x, I know 2 to the 0 power is 1 because anything to the 0 power is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Here's my next coordinate pair that I can go graph. It's going to be at 0, 3. Then if I just plug in a regular 1, 2 to the first power is just 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So then I'm going to be at 1, 6. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All the way up here. You can already see the pattern that's happening and that it's creating an exponential rate here, okay? And also you can see in your y values, these are all being multiplied by two, that's your common ratio, which again, we see right here. So if you were asked to graph an exponential function, you just need to create yourself an x, y chart and plug in values and then get your coordinate pairs, okay? If you need to see that in a more detailed fashion, your book has it kind of written out here. Um, they show you exactly how to plug everything in and to get your coordinate pairs. Okay, um, I think that that's it. Um, your assignment for today is 7-6 Lesson Quiz Online Pearson. Um, it has the date in there for 720. There aren't that many questions on there, so I really, really want you to focus on accuracy and be very cognizant as you're looking at the graphs. So if you have any questions, please message me. Um, I'm always here for you. Miss you. See you later.